So last night I was doing an all-nighter playing video games on my console. In all honesty, I really enjoyed it, but probably not for my parents, due to the loud and unintentional cusses being heard from a 14-year-old child at midnight, probably something not really good to hear. But apart from that, there was something that did come up to my mind. It's a word that's so commonly heard, but is complex in its own way. No, it's not a curse word. The word actually is technology. It's a short word, but the peculiar terminology consisting of a variety of contemplation. Ever since the advent of technology boomed over the past decade, we've been truly able to change our lifestyle. For instance, instead of dialing on a broader dial just like this, seven, one, for our seriously well is actually N, which takes a significant amount of our time. Seriously, you saw it. I had three more digits to put in. Nevertheless, we can now just go onto a networking app and click on the phone icon and communicate right away, even while looking at each other via video calls. Initially conceived as calculating devices, primarily for space companies, making it very limited and expensive, now over half of the world have access to technologies according to statistics given by InvestP. The true purpose of technology is to facilitate us in making things done more efficiently and effectively. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. You see, it's actually about gaming. But before I begin presenting my points about gaming, let me briefly introduce what gaming actually is. Gaming is a vast platform filled with diverse kinds of users around the globe, where they can interact with each other in the world inside of a video game developed by programmers, called game developers, primarily used for the work of playing games with each other. And it doesn't necessarily have to be you playing with other online players, it can just be you playing with other characters developed by game developers by the use of artificial intelligence. It's simply like a movie, except you can manipulate the actions of the avatar within the game, making it very popular and lucrative. Or, during the evening, well, have you heard of a game called Fortnite? Certainly a lot of millennials currently watching might have heard of it or played it once. Well, according to Monzo Gall, who's a writer and an editor, he enumerated that the revenue of Fortnite came to $2.4 billion, making it the highest annual revenue figure in the entire gaming industry, which was just released in 2017. Very recent. But that was just being said from a consumer's perspective. In this speech, however, it's actually about the design and constructing the video games. Before I begin presenting my points about game designing, I would like to briefly tell us that gaming did improve the past decade and it's still improving. Have you ever heard of 4G? Well, a lot of us know that this allows us to use cellular data, meaning that we can have access to the internet with an absence of a Wi-Fi station only if there is a cell tower nearby. Now, there's certainly a, con there's certainly a complex process behind it, as it illustrates here. Let's just put that away as it could intimidate some of us, which could possibly be me. To begin, does anybody here know what G stands for in 4G? Well, that G actually stands for generation. So far, we have four different generations of cellular networks, each providing with a boost of capa speed capacity to bring efficiency to, for instance, pressing social media much quicker. To understand that context in a better way, let me give us a really good example. Let's say that there is a muscular man in this world called Aegean, and we're definitely way out of his league. He's so strong that even the cops don't even want to mess with him which basically means that we shouldn't be messing with him. He has a super special power of running super fast. So fast that we can't even see him running, making him invisible. His only job in the world in order to prevent chaos among the humans is to run from his house to the nearest ice cream shop. He does this throughout the day back and forth and he cannot miss a second to stop. The faster he runs, the world is more joyful and pure, if you know what I mean by it. However, there are points in this process where obstacles do come by. And I mean, legit obstacles. Rocks begin to approach towards the direction and make him trip over. This causes Adrian to slow down his performance and issues begin to arise. Correspondingly, Adrian Reality is our router that can transmit information to waves that we can't see to the nearest cell tower. Just like Adrian's super speed invisibility power. Additionally, the, f the faster the wave is transmitting information to the nearest cell tower back to the house can bring efficiency to whatever you're doing on the internet let's say posting social media in this case. However, the rocks are us people, because when more people are accessing the same internet, it is an artist's task for the router itself to process the information altogether. With new generations of cellular networks being innovated over a given period of time, can make a radio game experience much better with zero latency. A better speed can allow the user to feel as if that person is in the game with other live players existing in the domain. And that's what I'm here to talk about. If you've ever heard of game design, there's certainly a complex process behind it, such as 3D modeling, coding, sound design, motion tracking, etc, etc. Nonetheless, recently people, 
primarily parents and teachers, became concerned regarding the outcomes that are happening to their children or students when playing video games. Before we begin, let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Russell Metta, a, a student currently studying in Thailand, and I've completed multiple game designing courses. I'm currently studying the field of gaming independently, and I've also completed the Outlook Code course by MIT. So, let's understand the cons of gaming. One of them is addiction. Kids nowadays play video games either on their consoles, personal computers, or even on their phone, and in some cases they aren't even doing their homework. Kids, have you ever heard from your parents to stop playing the games and just come outside to eat dinner? Well, probably something not directly like that, but something similar? Well, I have. Plenty of times. And to be honest, it's pretty annoying to hear. Unfortunately, several of us refuse to go out because we're either in an online game or we have a mission to complete, which gives us something really good in the game. As a result, parents often consider us addictive because we just aren't getting out of our game and simply coming out to eat dinner. A pretty simple task, right? Which pretty much sums up as the definition of being addicted to something. To clarify for all parents and teachers, online games cannot be paused. Let me ask a simple question to comprehend it much better. Can we pause reality? We can't, right? Similarly, online games are basically a platform run and rely on real time. The second issue behind gaming is brainwashing. We all as kids have seen something that we need to purchase in order to obtain something in the game. There are things like V-Bucks and, of course, missions that won't stop us from quitting to get us something valuable in the game. If these terms sound like alien to some of us, let me quickly explain what they are. V-Bucks are primarily an in-game money for a famous game called Fortnite. Nevertheless, we need to pay real money in order to obtain this in-game money, so we can use it to purchase characters, skins, avatars, or any other items in their specific item shop, allowing you to customize your character uniquely. Now, this should be understandable because as a game designer, their job is to keep their consumers interested in their fabricated video game, which they did and they simply fulfilled their task. In my response to this, I believe that everything philosophically has good and bad uses behind it, providing us with a unique outcome along with it and it is our choice to decide which one is ideal to utilize. So in this scenario, we could just either constantly and constantly buy V-Bucks and uh, keep on deducting money from our parents' credit card to the point where we will have no money, which pretty much sums, sums up at having the likelihood of having or, or being brainwashed to a specific video game. Or we could take another path, where we could maybe perhaps take it in limits, buying V-Bucks per week, per month, or per year giving us a less likelihood of being addicted or, or being uh, brainwashed to a single game. Finally, video games can also provide a negative influence on children, such as violent behaviors and destructive thinking when playing games that involve action or brutal content. After providing us with the downsides of gaming, we might have possibly become against gaming. Luckily, there is one aspect that can truly change our thinking of gaming in a good sense, and that word is brain building. One way it does is by simply increasing the volume of brain matter within your brain, which simply associates with your sensory perception. The sensory perception in your brain is responsible for seeing and hearing, memory, emotions, speech, decision making, and self control. Wait, 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 wait. How does this even correlate with gaming, you ask? Well, studies conclude that video gaming stimulates neurogenesis, meaning a growth of neurons. Ultimately, gaming is responsible for spatial orientation, memory formation, strategic planning, as well as fine motor skills. Let me provide us with a really good example. In the beginning of fifth grade, I was doing terrible in history. As a matter of fact, my teacher told me that I had ADHD due to my lack of understanding. Pretty harsh, right? Well, how is that even possible if I'm doing a TED talk right here with a really exceptional knowledge of science and gaming? Right? Moving along. During the second semester, as school ended, my parents uh, as, as school ended, my parents purchased a game called Uncharted 4, as you see here. And the game was fundamentally about an infamous British pirate called Henry Airy, who was rumored to have four hundred million dollars worth of stolen items. The goal in the game was to find that treasure as a character known as Nathan Drake, the guy who we see who we see in the front of the cover page, and who is also rich in historic knowledge throughout this series of Uncharted. As I finished playing the game, I suddenly got interested in learning more about history. Because Henry Avery was a real person. Seriously, that's true. You can search him up or Google him up, maybe later, because his speech might be important to all of us. And that was how, in sixth grade, my grades, especially for history, substantially got better. Another good thing that gaming is also good at doing is it promotes some skills, such as being the survival of the fittest in Fortnite by using the ideology of teamwork, or perhaps learning some new strategic ideas in games like Tetris or any other party games. Another good thing that gaming also does is that it promotes an awareness to the audience, 
something that should be taken seriously in reality. For example, a really good example comes from a game called Watch Dogs 2. And it was created by a video game company called Ubisoft, and they wanted to alert the audience about hacking. Because the world nowadays completely relies on technology to facilitate our task, it is really easy for our personal data and privacy to be taken by others and corporate companies. We play as a character in this game known as Marcus Holloway, the person who we see wearing the blue jacket on the cover page. And he associates with a team called DeadSec to prevent a corporate company called Bloom taking other personal people's data or privacy and fundamentally using it for the advantageous reasons. Another good thing that this game also does is it allows it to put the user itself into another person's shoe, in which that person can see both sides of perspective and then realize in knowing what's, in what side is that person actually for. Finally, reading is always open. Kids should always be aware and open to everything, whether it is good or bad, so they can realize in better knowing what's right and wrong. You see, the, gener the, the purpose of having generations is to let the previous generation give its past knowledge and experience and its current mistakes they did to the new generation. So as generation and generation pass by, we can get smarter and more genius, and then realize the purpose of reality and what even is reality, and what's our reason to be in reality. Something pretty cool to ponder about, right? And also something that we constantly hear in a reading 101 class. So, if gaming is a versatile aspect that can truly change the world, then how can we do it? Well, according to my given knowledge in this field, I believe that we are, or virtual reality, should be taking over the school industry. We all know that waking up early is an issue for several students, especially for those who live far away from the schools, just like me. We also know that there are also some unexpected occurrences, like a global pandemic that we're facing, uh, fundamentally causing scheduling issues and also forming bad habits in our daily lives. Something not really good, right? Also, we can't live in an ideal world, because let's say we were in a physics class, where it's really difficult to understand a concept like a proton within the atom, because we can't visually see it. Well, VR can assist us there. You see, the purpose of VR is to take us to a whole new digital world developed by certified game developers, and it allows us to see things in a first-person perspective, just like how we see reality. But it allows us to see things that is impossible to be in reality. In VR, we can be like whoever we want to be. We can also learn more efficiently and effectively because majority of the world are visual learners. And obviously, in VR, we're going to be visualizing things. Also, if that's all true, then we can hypothetically exist in an ideal world because the purpose of computers is to create perfection as its outcome. Now, apart from all the good things, there is one thing that isn't allowing this to happen, and that is a super fast internet connection. Recently, China stated that they're developing a new generation of cellular networks known as 5G. And they mentioned that this new generation of cellular networks is capable of making VR so practical and wants so much data, or opticals, at once, potentially allowing for VR conferences and communication to be truly enhanced. This basically means that we can make this happen very soon. Well, basically when 5G actually comes out, which is probably going to happen very soon. So, before I wrap this speech up, I would like to leave us with a simple question. Are you willing to escape reality? Thank you.